What's up, chickies? It's Baron and Space here. Today, we're doing a deep dive on the Kraken. That's right. What's up, chickies? <laughs> so, today, we're doing uh, both variants. Well, we're going to be going over both variants, both the Privateer and just a normal Kraken. Um, there's not a lot of differences between the two. This the the obvious with the, the upgrade. So, we'll go over them and sort of what you lose and what you gain if you were to have a normal Kraken. So... Obviously, to start off with, this ship was actually uh, started off in 2017. It had um, like a, a, a voting, just like what we had this year after CitizenCon, and all three ships were designed. They had the Vulture, the Corsair, and then they had the Kraken. What do you? The Kraken. Yeah. What do you got to? What do you think about the Kraken? I know you have one, so. Man, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be a good ship. I'm looking forward to it. I see it more as a fleet support ship and, a, you know, a transport of smaller ships over long distances than a direct combat ship. I mean, obviously it's well gunned, but it's not going to be something you're going to dogfight an Idris in. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's going to be big. It's going to lumber along. It's going to take a little bit to make a turn. So it's, it's not... It's not necessarily something you're going to use as an offensive platform in and of itself. You'll use the ships that it's carrying for that. Yeah. Or you could support a mining operation or a trade operation or, like I said, just a long-range transport. I, you know, the Liberator just came out, and it's like, okay, that looks really cool, but I've had, I have a Kraken. Why would I need the Liberator? Not knocking the Liberator. You know, it's a good ship, but it'll it'll basically do the same thing that the Liberator's designed to do. Yeah. So I do want to add though one thing we forgot in the beginning. You know, we'll say it right up front. You can buy just about every ship they make with very few exclusions in the game. We're not telling you to go spend money and buy a Kraken. You can buy one in game. We're just telling you what we know about the ship. And you can decide for yourself whether you want to buy it for real money, you want to pass completely, or you want to work for one in-game. Yeah. So we've been going back and forth about what we've seen at CitizenCon. Like, obviously, the Kraken is going to serve a great purpose. I know Space now, we both love the Merchant Man, but Space is just next level with that ship. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got the Liberator, which obviously does sort of the same thing as the Kraken, but the Kraken has a lot more support there and it's got a lot more facilities within the ship. But getting to it, we know that um, the Kraken is 270 meters long, 104 meters wide, 64 meters high. Whether or not this will change in the concept pass, I think it would be highly likely that may be changing because they are adding the medical facilities on that vessel. So like I said, you got the two variants, you got the normal Kraken and the Privateer. With the normal Kraken, you have 3,792 SEU of cargo. It costs 1,650, uh, or it costs 1,400 with War Bond. It has rearm, refuel, and repair. It has a Dragonfly hold. It has uh, uh, fully visible cargo, so you, when you get scanned, people can actually see what is in your cargo hold. Um, with the Privateer, you have 768 cargo. You have t it's two thousand dollars, seventeen hundred dollars on War Bond. It does not have refuel, repair, and rearm. Um, it does not have a Dragonfly hold because that is the private shop section. Um, and then your cargo hold will then become the, the public shop system. But each shop that you have, if you were to look at the shops, I'm pretty sure it has about like it has 189 SEU um, per shop. Per shop, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I will, I will say this though. I'm I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm right. pretty sure that it's gonna be able to rearm, repair, refuel. I don't know where that came from. That was yeah. uh no, so the, the Kraken will be able to, but apparently the privateer won't have that ability. Really? Yeah. That's why I heard I'm not I'm not sure if it's hundred percent true. I'm I think, can't believe that. I think I can't believe that. Nah. It's people are saying it, but I was, I was like, I don't know about that. Nah, I can't I don't know where that came from. So it defeats the entire purpose of the ship. Yeah. We'll um have a look over because I've gone through the jump point magazine as well, sort of looking over the bridge. There's, we know like there's not a lot going on um with what we know at the moment. Obviously, with the Kraken you'll have your landing platforms, your bridge, your private market, your public market, your internal hangars, turret access. Uh you'll also have engineering. 
on the normal one and on both of them more or less you obviously have your cargo hold on the normal kraken and then you have a dragonfly hold so you have four people that are able to be on the bridge obviously you have more that are standing around i guess you have five manned turrets you have a bridge a break room a crew room a captain's room planning room uh times four buccaneer hold habs times four cutlass habs four dragonfly bays uh two cargo areas and then you have like a storage area within the cargo area. It looks like a little bit of a lift. And then you have hangar habs uh, pods as well. There's four of those. You have an air cart that can hold four people and has 12 SCU. And the ship, and I repeat, will have a med bay. Yeah, boy. So for sure, we've we've spoken about this. What do you think about this ship having a med bay? I feel like it it needs it, and it's a necessity. Well, I mean, considering this going to be a support ship, you know, whether it's uh, a direct combat, indirect combat, it's a capital class ship. It's a great big ship. And even though it's Drake and Drake catches a lot of flack, um, it definitely needs a, a med bay. I mean, it's designed to go long distance. It's designed to operate for long periods of time. <clears throat> I think not putting a med bay on it would, would be just dumb. I, don't, I can't I can't find any reason why you wouldn't put one on it, especially considering the size and the job it's, it's, that it's meant to do. Yeah, you may. You know, there's going to be guys coming back from combat with injuries. Unless you parked an Apollo or something on the deck, the ship itself should be able to service those injuries. Yeah, 100%. So um, I'll just skip away from the medical side of it because I'm hoping it has um tier one beds it would you would think for a capital vessel and the vessel that is being completely self-reliant that it will have the ability to actually um save someone's life it may have tier. it will probably end up having tier two beds as well just for the fact that uh when someone has an injury they'll just go straight to the tier two bed uh eliminating like having always having a tier one not that i think it would be any drawbacks um so the vessel can land planet side. So those front two skirts you see under the um, landing pads, that is like a VTOL thruster as well to help it get out of atmosphere. Uh, with the it weapon, won't be easy though. No, <laughs> you probably need an SRV to help you out. But yeah. yeah, they said you may have to may have to have something to help it get out of atmo on a heavy atmo. Yeah. So with the weapons, you have on the front. A dual size 8 front turret. I think that will be oh. a gimbaled weapon. <laughs> you have four dual size 6 turrets. And you have four times dual size 5 remote turrets. So I'm going to guess the people who are sitting on the bridge are going to be able to control those uh, remote turrets. Yeah. Which is going to be interesting. So I know you've got the normal Kraken. What do you think of the privateer in comparison of the normal Kraken. Well, you know, I actually considered the privateer, but in my line of thinking, the Banu was just better suited for trading. I mean, to me, it seemed like it would be easier to get on and off planets than the Kraken would based on the lore that we heard about the difficulty getting on in and out. Yeah. Um, obviously, the cargo is different. I'd rather have the pure cargo than have to spread out my cargo over you know, the stores, um, just, just overall <clears throat> for the way I, I see myself using the ship, I just preferred the regular Kraken and, and that's not knocking the privateer. I mean, it's virtually the same ship minus the cargo and minus, you know, some other things is there's, there's nothing in the world wrong with the privateer, but just for my own use, I, I just really wanted to have the cargo capacity because like I said, I see it as a, a fleet support ship. You know, yeah. you, you go out on a mining operation with, you know, several prospectors and moles, for instance, where do, where do you, where do you put the ore? <laughs> yeah. If you're on a, if you're on a privateer, it, it makes it a little bit harder. I mean, by the time you figure to ship stores and extra ammo and, and, you know, maybe some components and things like that, that hole is going to fill up pretty quick. And I doubt that you'd have the capacity to take ore into a store. Yeah. You know? No pun intended. <laughs> so I just feel like that that the for me at least the regular you know the regular Kraken is is more suited to what I see myself using it as. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, I know what you mean. Um, so I went through a lot of the Q and A with this vessel, and I just wanted to sort of get some information right and sort of yet build a little bit more information on this ship. But with the privateers shops, um, you can actually choose the type of shop that you want. So you can have like weapons, clothing, clothing. I guess you could have like components as well. You can hire a shopkeeper. Uh, you can buy stock. You can set a profit margin. Uh, you can sell to players and NPCs, which is also a massive bonus with this system when it comes in. Uh, and you do have the private shops, which have 189 SCU. And I believe it has two of those private shops. I'm not... Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think so. So, it says you'll be able to spawn your ships uh, on the Kraken if you own them. So, whether or not you have to spawn the ship in and then spawn them while it's uh, sitting in a hangar or it's docked up, I'm not 100% sure. There's no um, sort of real information on the Q&A on that. Um, you can only... What it means is, what, what it means essentially is when you go to spawn that ship. Now, of course, remember... All of these ships have to be at the same place. You can't call up a ship that's two systems away and expect it to just show up on the Kraken. So it'll have to be ships that are in that station's or or that particular location's inventory. But what it essentially means is you call up the Kraken and, and the ships that you want on it, and the Kraken will spawn with those ships already on it, as opposed to yeah. spawning the Kraken and then physically spawning the other ships and flying them out to wherever the Kraken is. The Kraken will just spawn with those ships on it up yeah. to the ships you have or the, the number that they limit us to be able to spawn of our own ships. Like right now we can only spawn three ships. So I don't know what that limit will be or if there'll even be a limit. Yeah. So with, um, so with the, um, whole spawning the ships as well, it can only be the ship, the Kraken's owner's ships. I know, from when I was reading the Q and A, that's what it sort of had it descripted. So it's, yeah, yeah. Um, you can only equip civilian and industrial components on this vessel, so you can't put any um, military components on there, which is a bit of a downer. But I guess we'll have that just, may change. Though. Yeah, we'll just have to see once the game's like fully in. Yeah, I've 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 heard a few rumblings and I've seen a few Spectrum posts where there was some discussion about it. So that may change because the line of thinking is you know you'll be able to work for any ship in the game and buy any ship in the game and any component in the game and as if it fits it sits should still apply to the components was kind of the argument that people were making and and it seemed to be making some headway so it could change or it could stay the same i mean i'm 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 cool with it either way because i, I don't think you're gonna really lose anything yeah um the way they're doing the ship balancing i don't think that it's going to make that big a difference but obviously if i could get military components you know grade a components i'd, I'd rather have them in my fleet but it's not going to deter me from using the ship no definitely um one thing that's sort of debatable it's not like a hundred percent factual uh, but in the Q and A, there was a question asked about modularity. Now it didn't actually one hundred percent specify, but people were saying, you know, there is a lot of room in that cargo area, um, a lot of real estate that people want to use for. Obviously, eventually you will have the privateer if anyone gets that. Uh, but they they did say in the Q and A that there will possibly be some form of another way of utilizing that cargo area instead of having just that pure cargo so there may be a form of modularity coming i'm not like saying it's coming i'm just saying that's what is on the q a um so with the shields as well this was another big one is that when you are landed on the deck or you are standing on the deck of the kraken the shields only cover the hull of the ship unfortunately they do not cover the ships that are landed on the actual deck so right if you yeah, the argument that those ships would have their own shield systems yeah so if you land on a kraken and you hop out just like any normal time turn the power off leave your shields on because <laughs> if you land your ship on there and you turn your shields off it's a good chance if it's in battle it's just gonna get blown up and catch you later you're not gonna be flying around for too much longer and you'll yeah. be fully that, dependent. you know that could change as well but i kind of doubt it i kind of doubt that'll change i feel like that the shields will only actually cover the ship itself yeah so i've i've covered pretty much what i want to cover on the ship i don't know if you had any more to interject into there 
Um, not really. I mean, I, I would go back to what you said about the modularity. You know, we talked about it before we started recording. I, I don't, in the renderings and in the concepts, we don't really see um, any modules in it. If you look at like the Javelin has, you know, specific rooms for the modularity. The Caterpillar is kind of broken up. The, the, the Carrick is kind of broken up with, you know, with, with dedicated space for modules is kind of how I see it. So I, I don't know. Maybe it was something that was just missed in the concept and maybe it would, it would be added, but you know, I would tend to think that probably not. I would be a little disappointed to think that the Caterpillar would have modularity, but the Kraken wouldn't. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, so we can hope, but um, I wouldn't buy this ship thinking or counting on the fact that, or, you know, that it's going to have modularity because I, I don't, just don't know. Yeah. It could go either way. So with that, like we said in the beginning, Space said, we're not telling you to go, hey, go and buy the ship. We suggest that, you know, you can go and purchase that ship. We know they're going to be fully available in game. We know that people will have the money and some people won't have the money to purchase these vessels. But if you were able to afford one, get one. I mean, if you are fully thinking about investing into Star Citizen and you have no question of how much you're going to put into it, go for it. But if you are questionable on how much you're going to put in this game, you know, you just want to buy a couple of ships, that's it. We completely respect that. But we do just make, um, you know, little, I don't know, just if you want to buy this ship, it's a great vessel to have be it Kraken Privateer or Kraken. The Kraken would probably be the better option. It's up to you, but we just put these videos out there because it's a little bit more information that is out there for you to see. Yeah, and I mean, we're we're trying to make content for everybody. People have been playing the game for years, people who are original backers, people who just got the game a week ago, you know. There's a lot of you guys that are watching that know all this information that we're, you know, we're presenting, but the reality is, you know, new players are coming in every day. So we're trying to give you as much as we can <clears throat> about what we know and even theory crafting sometime, you know, but, but we're trying to make content for everybody. It's not, it's not just, we're trying to regurgitate the same old thing, which we're, we're trying to present a different slant, a different take on, you know, on what we do know. Yeah. Uh, the, only, the only other thing I would say is, you know, if you're looking at a capital ship and you're, you're thinking about, uh, what kind of gameplay you're going to use, you're going to have and, and what you're going to do with the ship. Um, you know, as, as an owner of this ship myself, I went through the same process. I considered the, the Idris and the Javelin and, you know, all the alternatives. And it really comes down on this ship. If, if you want to be able to carry a lot of your own ships, long distances with good protection and good range there is no other choice in the game than the kraken you can put three small ships on an idris you can put one medium ship maybe one large ship but one medium ship on the javelin <clears throat> and then i think the liberator is what three three small ships and some ground vehicles in the hangar that we know for sure that we can put anything in the hangar i, I don't I don't know that we can or we can't. We may be able to, but we know we can put three small ships or or I guess probably two medium ships on a Liberator. Uh, yeah. Granted, the Liberator is less than a third the cost. Um, you know, if you like to collect your small medium ships, <laughs> you need to move them around and then the crack ends your ticket. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, in a head-to-head -head contest with an Idris, it's a tough call because they're two completely different ships. You know, the, the the Idris and this get compared a lot. You know, I want this for this and I want this for this. Well, if you know that you want a certain style of gameplay, the Idris is better suited for knowing that you're limited a little bit in what you can put inside, buy the Idris or work for it in game. If yeah. you know you want to transport a lot of friendships, or if you wanted, well, let's say you wanted to go into business of moving other people's ships around the verse. This is the platform for it. I mean, it's, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts until they come out with a bigger liberator, Ooh, which yeah. is entirely possible. You yeah. know, I, I I think that it's entirely possible that we'll see another larger carrier in the game. Did you know? Be on that, but but I feel like we will. Did you know on Fleet Viewer 
the uh, Liberator is classified as a capital ship? Yeah, that's. I don't think that's correct. But no, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm blown away from that. But anyway, that's been the cracking video, and be on the lookout for the Banning Merchantman 2.0 deep dive because it's coming this week. Yeah, it's just coming. <laughs> oh boy! But it's been Baron uh, in space, and we'll see you in the verse. Peace, love, and chicken grease.